at Christmas time, uh, the radio stations would not play any calypso. You, you remember that? There would be no calypso all through Christmas. All you would hear would be Christmas carols and religious songs. Uh, I don't know the extent to which this still is, uh, but, uh, but a lot of Christmas has already been lost. There are now those who are asking that uh, we probably just need to forget it, don't even talk about it, don't mention it in church because it is not anything that we should, uh, we should uh, get involved with. Uh, so Christmas has become a real sort of business venture. Now, even, even in places where they do not have any Christians, and, uh, and the religion of the state it is not Christian at all. They now have Christmas. You go to certain, uh, to certain parts of the world where they are not even Christians welcomed, but Christmas is. Uh, because Christmas has become something, it, uh, something quite different than what the founders uh, wanted. Uh, the founders wanted Christmas to be a time when Christ, Jesus Christ, his birth would be celebrated. And uh, for most of the, uh, the Christian community, uh, most of the Christian community follows what is called a Christian calendar. And Christmas is on that calendar. Uh, Seventh-day Adventists, we do not follow the calendar, the, Christmas, the, the Christian calendar. But we do have a little bit of a healthy regard for Christmas and we do encourage that we utilize the spirit of Christmas as a deliberate evangelistic tool uh, because uh, you would know that uh, that many many people would not you would not get an audience any other time of the year except maybe at Christmas and we have to find a way to utilize the spirit of Christmas so Christmas is, uh, is, is for the church, a time when we reach out and we, ex we seek to explain away a little bit of why Christ came. And I want to encourage that we not just simply tell part of the story. It's not just about his birth, but we tell the entire story. Because uh, Jesus came... Uh, not just to be born, to have a happy time, but he came so that he would die so that our sins can be paid for. And uh, the, the rest of the story is still to come because Jesus is coming, coming again. He, he came, he, he was born, he died, he was buried, he got out of the grave, and he is in heaven. And guess what? He is coming again. So not only have they stolen Christmas, but they have replaced it with something very terrible. Shopping. Shopping. <laughs> I, uh, I got into my vehicle this morning, and as I turned it on, uh, the radio was still on from yesterday. And uh, right there, as the radio came on, there was a news item. And uh, before I shut it off, I took the time to listen to the, to the news item. It, they were reporting that today would be the busiest shopping day of the year. Uh, they expect that over $3 billion, I think it was, will be spent today in preparation for Christmas. But Christmas is not about shopping. It should not be about all of the shopping and what goes on. I know there's a lot of stuff that goes on around Christmas time. It should not be. For us, we should make use of the opportunity to witness about Jesus. I would urge, do not be naive.
Do not lock yourself up in a box and have nothing to do with it necessarily. If, uh, if you want to give somebody a gift, you can. But be sure that that gift you give helps to get that person to understand a little bit more about whom? About Jesus. Don't give gifts just for the fun of it. If you're going to give somebody something because this is the time you have an opportunity to reach out to them, make sure that you give them something of value and of worth. And of worth. So uh, as we work ourselves through the next few days during this uh, Christmas uh, season, I want to urge that we attempt to do at least three things. At least three things. Share Jesus with somebody. Share Jesus with somebody. Uh, the world has forgotten that. They have forgotten that. Uh, you know, I, I read a story of a little girl who, uh, 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 was, who learned a story uh, uh, in her Sabbath school. And uh, so she went home and she began repeating uh, the story to her parents. Of course, uh, she was taught John chapter 3 and verse 16. And this is how she repeated to her parents, For God so loved the world that he gave his only forgotten son. And uh, yes, that's what she thought it said. But indeed, God has been forgotten uh, in the Christmas story. He has. Our job is to try to tell his story. Try to tell his story. So uh, tell someone about Jesus. Tell someone the real story. Then give somebody some love this Christmas season. Give somebody some love. People are not going to be re as receptive any other time as they would around the Christmas time. This is a time we can really love somebody and show them that we love them. Not just in word or in town, but in actions. We can tell somebody indeed that Jesus loves loves them. So love somebody and share Jesus this Christmas season. I want to wish all of you a happy, happy holiday. Uh, but as you interact with your friends and your colleagues and your family members, I want to urge, don't get too caught up in all of the, all of the, the frivolous events of Christmas. But be sure you utilize the season, uh, the spirit of Christmas, to share the true story, the whole story. I say the true story, and then I say the whole story, because the true story has, has been forgotten, but the whole story will include the fact that not only that Jesus was born, but also that he died, and more importantly, that he is coming again sooner than most people believe. We need to tell that story and tell it loud and clear. God bless you today. Have a happy holiday is my prayer. Our closing hymn will be 125, 125. Joy to the world, the Lord is come.